artist uh, who usually disagree with me on these every time I try to persuade her. And why is this so? She is a divorcee and she got divorced when she was 38 or 37. Now, when you are divorced as a beautiful young woman at 37, what is the guarantee that you will not fall into the sin of uh, fornication and adultery, especially when you are not ready to remarry because men are scum? That's what she says. She's a Christian. Fireproof. If that lady starts praying, if you are in house three, you wake up. The voice is loud, the aura is heavy, iburuburu, everything, whether English or tongue, she's there. But guess what? Once in a week, she will go and sleep with someone. And then she comes back. So I told her, this spirit that you have, how do you do it? That you can continually go back to the sin you know you will commit and you have no restitution coming up for you. How do you do it? He said they told them that oh, once you have the spirit, it's a gift. It can't go away. Okay, that's really right. But are you going to continue in sin and say, let there be mercy abounding? Uh, he said that the body also has needs. <laughs> I don't understand. For God's sake, what are we serving? I don't understand it. I said, but each time I tell you, remarry, even if it's because of this one alone. Let the man be biting you every money. It doesn't matter. Because at least you have a profit in the marriage. You are saying, no, they has come, they has come. Ah. Till tomorrow. You know, after a while, the person that says the truth always will be the enemy of the community. So, she stopped talking to me. I mean, I moved on too. My job is to say, it's the spirit of God that will interpret. And then about two days, I saw the DP. She repeated the same thing. That is weakness that they are weak that let god come and help them <laughs> so now you are playing the manipulation game for god again that you are weak so is that weakness adultery is now weakness so we should just be sleeping with everybody we like and say we are weak that god should come and be helping the weakness and why we continue it are we deceiving ourselves as christians The spirit of God is to help your weakness so that you can get out of being weak. He didn't say I will help your weakness while you are still weak. You can imagine if I'm still in primary four till now. It doesn't add up. You need to graduate. Even if you are in that scene, the help of the Holy Spirit is to get you out of it. And this person I'm talking about has been about four years and you are still in it. So for four years, the Holy Spirit cannot help you get out of adultery. And the solution Paul already gave if you cannot hold your body, go and uh, marry. Wait in the, I don't need to hold body now. See, beautiful person that God gave to me. Fire on all cylinders. Uh -huh, it's not a sin. But the fact that you are forming, you don't like it. You don't know that that is what it means. But people don't realize that marriage is more than uh, I love you, you love me. Sometimes it's to keep you so that you can get to heaven too. But you misplace that priority. And then all you are saying is she's, she's an idiot. You... Let your wife be an idiot until you need it to, to the other room. Then you know she's not an idiot. Hallelujah. And for the women, the same men has come. You want to pay us rent now. Whether you think God that merges both of us together, that streamlined this like this, that everybody has their role. You think God, you are wiser than God. That's the problem. But once you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in you is not telling you to do the right thing. Your own Holy Spirit is not teaching you that divorce is not good. You are not thinking about what happens after the divorce. Now you are just angry, your rage, your ego is on you. And it happens in businesses as well. Spirit of God, teach me at all times. Let Holy Spirit do the work for you. There is a beauty at the other end that you have not assessed. There is a sweetness that the Holy Spirit can bring to you that you have not read, laid your hand on. Let him do it for you. Spirit of God, teach me at all times. See me through life successfully. In the name of Jesus, Spirit of God, Teach me right. See me through life successfully. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mightiest name we have prayed. Expose all things to me. And lead me at all times to go through them. Expose every secret to me. Secret that will make my life better. Expose to me. Secret that will make my ministry move. Expose to me. Secret that will flourish my business. Expose to me. Spirit of God. Expose to me. In the name of Jesus. And lead me through them. Lead me through them. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus mightiest name we have prayed. And this is where we will be ending with prayers 
is the evidence that the Holy Spirit is in you. I told you, a lot of people have spirits in them that are not the Holy Spirit. Remember that the evil spirit can mirage like the Holy Spirit as well. And man can also mermaid what we call the spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. It is important to be certain. Underline that. It's very important that it, you are certain that what you carry is the spirit of God. And I tell you that most people think speaking in tongues is the surest way you can know that you are filled with the Holy Ghost. But that is true, but not the only way. And the reason why this is a little bit downtoned is because people now have formats they use for tongues. So you can probably, because it happens in songs. Someone asked me that on the podcast. If somebody is singing and they are, whatever they are singing, whatever tongue they say in it, that's what everybody says. Nowadays, people don't even sing again. Oh, Lord, my God. That's what they go to next. So, we should be singing your para papa now. Hallelujah. They say they are chanting. We are deceiving ourselves. You are watching because you are speaking the talk of ages. Now, you are speaking to. We that we are, you are supposed to lead us to Christ now. Lead us to God. How we go to follow you now? Because we don't understand what you are saying. And on the average, is it me that you are ministering to? No. Are you just leading me to God? No. The people you are supposed to lead to God know nothing about your pepper pepper pepe that you are doing. They, 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 what's their own? They just say, I feel something. They feel something that is not changing anything. Hallelujah. I'm not saying it's bad. But we are overdoing it nowadays. Overdoing it. And this is one. I remember those days. My pastor then, I think I was in the university. Anytime he speaks in tongue, I always enjoy it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And as if this man knew that I always enjoy it. For a whole preaching section for Sunday, he will not speak once. We will pray oh, two hours, not even once. Not a mistake of. I'll be with. When he's leading us like that, I'll be praying. You know, in my heart, I'm like, God, let this man speak that thing. I just enjoy it. I don't know. It's like fun to me. He will not say it. Is he every time? Every time now good morning it has gotten into a place that husband and wife use tongue to greet themselves now and you think it's a joke just go to twitter and check it you see them there i want to tell you good morning say good morning my wife say he said he don't tell you good morning good morning my love <laughs> and that is what we call this that's the evidence that people have but that's not supposed to be the evidence that's not supposed to be it. There's no what the evidence should be. I tell you one after the other. This one is point blank. It's point and kill. If you are missing these evidences that the Bible says should be the evidence of the spirit, you don't have the original spirit. Simple. If you have these, then you are right. Then you have the spirit. And I also tell you how to get the real spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. The Bible shows us here that truly if you are filled by the spirit of God, the expectations that we have will not be cut short. The first thing you see here from Romans chapter 8 verse 9 is once the spirit dwells in you, flesh will not be there. What do we mean by flesh? Sin. So like the other lady I spoke about who has heavy sins. Now, known sins, you know. Every Friday you go and meet this man. If the man is not around, you go to this other man. If this other man is not around, you have this boy that met you like it's, it's it's ridiculous even in school if you behave like that they will expel you and as a child of god feel to the brim that's what she does <laughs> i say you have turned to what do they call the women that carry men i say you have hey, but everything i was saying there was falling to their ears because people want to enjoy their sin and still be called of god there are two opposing sins opposing things narrow is the way it's going to be narrow it's not popular it's not sweet but the end is what is sweet that is how life is if we think about the sweetness of having babies nobody 
we want to have babies because of the pain of carrying the pregnancy very difficult how about the pushing very difficult but we continue because we know the ending is what the sweeter so no matter if what you do if sin flesh is evident in your life that's not from the good god second one romans chapter 5 verse 3 to 5 the bible says and not only so but we glory in the tribulation also knowing that tribulation worketh patience now look at this let me read another version king james version i struggle with the uh, <laughs> the way they pronounce their words not only that but we rejoice in our sufferings they call it tribulation and i call it sufferings knowing that sufferings produces endurance please follow this endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not put us to shame because god's love has been poured into our heart through the holy spirit who has been given to us once you have the holy spirit poured in you what do you have you rejoice in suffering And once you do that, the suffering produces endurance. You see all these things I'm talking about? We don't have it as Christians. Me, I know. We, is, people of the ha- world has more endurance than us. Because immediately something don't go right. Then you don't run to pray and start praying. It's the enemy. It's this. You, you can't even cope with anything. Anything. You sleep small thing now. You see one leaf that falls on the tree. Oh, oh, oh our enemies are here. Oh, ooh. You say yeah, you don't want to lose God. You are afraid is fear. You don't have endurance. You don't have character. Do you know I've had people say they prefer to live in the houses that the landlords are Muslims in Abuja than to live in a house that the landlord is a Christian? No character. So now you are filled with the Holy Spirit, but your character is everybody can say you are you are terrible. Not even one person. And the next coach you will say it's go to where you are celebrated. You are not thinking about the character you are deeming out to people. But you have the Holy Spirit. But your character is out of it. People don't want to do business with you because you are a semitive. You will disappoint with jobs. You will take their money. And at the end of the day, you say you are filled with the Holy Spirit. No, you have the fake. If you don't have hope, it doesn't show that you have the Holy Spirit in abundance. I will tell us one more. Because I want us to understand. Don't look for the tongues alone as the evidence of the Spirit. How about your character? Are you delivering on what you promised? How about that? How about the hope you have? Long suffering. How long are you to wait on the Lord before He does what you want without complaining and nagging? How far can you wait? Let's get some more. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. You can already guess there is no way I must say this before I go. The Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit, fruits of the Spirit. Once you say you have the Holy Spirit, this is what comes forth. It is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith. And it didn't leave it there. You know that meekness, temperance, and against such there is no law. The Bible is saying, don't worry about any, uh, any other thing. It's only when you have this that you have the Spirit of God. How many of us that claim that we have the feelings for God has all of these fruits in us? So what I am trying to say in all is, from today, write it down, make it big, start looking at it. The ones you don't have inculcated, you need to have this to show that you have the Holy Spirit. And once these things appear in you, you will discover that that will start irritating you. I'm telling you, you won't be able to do it as much. Because now you understand that what the spirit is to do, the evidence it brings, is not that power, power, power thing. There is no way here that we have read that said you will now have uh, power to dismantle anything. And then all your life, what you are doing is to dismantle. You are not building anything. No. The spirit of God is to help you build as well. As well as to dismantle some things. The balance has to be there. But in most cases, we move towards the power and we don't move towards what will help us build. I want you to pray. Spirit of God, help me to have self-control as I proceed in the journey of life. Help me to have self-control in the name of Jesus. You are filled with the Holy Spirit, but you can fight your neighbor. You are filled with the Holy Spirit, but you are, you are more abusive than people in the world. 
Lord, help me to have self-control. In the name of Jesus. Self-discipline. Help me to have it. In the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' mightiest name, we are praying. Help me to forgive others and those that had wronged me. Even those that have not wronged me. Help me to forgive. In the name of Jesus. Help me to forgive those that had hurt me. In the name of Jesus. Gentleness is an evidence of the Spirit of God. If you have the Spirit of God, then you should forgive. Lord, help me to forgive. Help me to forgive those that have wronged me. In truth, they have hurt me, but help me to forgive them and forget. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mightiest name we are praying. Spirit of God, grant me the spirit of love. Grant me the spirit of patience in abundance so that I can exhibit the fullness of the spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, I want to exhibit the fullness of God. Grant me the spirit of love. Grant me the spirit of patience. In the name of Jesus, grant me the spirit of love. Grant me the spirit of patience. In the name of Jesus, so I can exhibit fullness of the spirit of God. In Jesus' mightiest name we are praying. You know, when your friend calls you for help, you make jest of them because they don't have what you have and they are spirit filled where is that written how does that exhibit the spirit you have if i'm a shoemaker i should be able to make shoes if i'm a tailor i should be able to make clothes but you are filled with the spirit and you have no fruit of the spirit so what spirit are you filled with hallelujah if you touch water you know it's water if you touch petrol you know it's petrol nobody will use petrol and start cooking rice and pour it inside it and pour rice in it. I want to quickly boil rice. Because we already know the elements of a petrol. We know what it should do. We know the elements of water. We know what it should do. But here you are claiming you have the elements of water. And you cannot cook. That means it's a lie. Hallelujah. I want you to dig deep into the fruit of the spirit. And first of all, let God pull that in you. Once you have that, you see the version of the Holy Ghost we are talking about. You will no longer be, be so eager to go out. I've seen pastors who will say they feel like they should just go to where there are lepers and people who have no legs and just go and be praying for them. I'm like, okay. So who told you that? Who told you to go and do that? Say the Spirit of God. Okay, and when you now went there, what now happened? <laughs> Nothing happened. You just have compassion. And then you don't know. We treated it already. The difference between human spirit and the spirit of God. How will God tell you to go somewhere and pray for people and they are not healed? So, <laughs> and you are not worried. You don't know that there is, that there is a problem somewhere. There is a problem. Because what you think the Holy Spirit is, is power. That powerful person that scatters everything and destroys. That's not it alone. I am not saying that's not part of it. It is there. The speaking in tongues is also an evidence of it. But you need to know the other fruit that is more important than these ones that we are flaunting. My ability to endure. Let everyone enhance it today by the Spirit of God. My ability to endure. Let the Spirit of God enhance it in my life. So I can obtain mercy and goodness in the name of Jesus. Let my ability to endure be enhanced in the name of Jesus. My ability to endure, let it be enhanced in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mightiest name we have prayed. Once you are selfish, that's not from the Holy Spirit. And that's one thing I notice about people talking about the Holy Spirit. Everything they say the Holy Spirit is saying to them is what benefits them. Holy Spirit don't tell you things that will really benefit others. So that means you are actually formatting us. Hallelujah. Ah, that's not good. You see pastors will go to programs and while they are ministering, it's just like when I finish ministering now and I say, the Holy Spirit is telling me there are 30 people here that will give 100,000. <laughs> oh, God, me. Holy Spirit, not tell you, may you carry the money in your account and share to people who don't have. It's always to benefit you. That is not it. And everywhere. And now, assuming this even happened once, in about five years, we say, okay, maybe that is it. But every program you go, Holy Spirit must tell you to collect money from people. That is not good enough. It's not the Holy Spirit. But you can speak in tongues for whatever you like. It is not the Holy Spirit. Because we know the fake is here. But for you, I don't want you to languish in this, this pit that mirages the Holy Spirit. But I want you to have the original one. Let all the fruit of the Spirit be 
begin to germinate from me from today by the spirit of god let the spirit of god bring all the fruit of the spirit to start germinating start germinating from me in the name of jesus the love let my love begin to germinate joy let it begin to germinate long suffering endurance let it begin to germinate in the name of jesus the spirit in of god let it begin to germinate every fruit of the spirit in me in jesus mightiest name we have prayed and finally you're going to say holy spirit of god lead me into greatness and fulfillment of destiny let the holy spirit of god lead me into greatness and the fulfillment of my destiny in the name of jesus holy spirit of god lead my family into greatness lead my family to fulfillment of destiny in the name of jesus in jesus mightiest name we have prayed